Blessed Thursday morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Truly glad to come together with you today to share from God's Word. And today, the uh, thought for the day does bring us to the end of the book of Zechariah, Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 14. And as I was going through this chapter of the Bible this morning, um, verse 12 speaks about how God sent plagues. And today I wanted to speak about plagues. Um, in Exodus chapter 9 and 10, you read there for yourself in those two chapters of the Bible, we see that God is sending plagues on the people of Egypt, uh, Pharaoh, because they would not listen to the Lord. We read in Leviticus chapter 26, verse 21, in the Old Testament, God would strike a nation and people that won't listen to him. Psalm 9, verse 17 reminds us the nation that forgets God people forgets God goes to hell um, Proverbs 14 verse 34 reminds us righteousness exalts a nation but sin is its downfall in the book of Revelation you read in Revelation chapter 15 verse 1 where seven plagues are sent to complete God's judgment and wrath and then in Revelation chapter 22 verses 18 and 19 the Bible speaks about how God sends plagues on a people who add or take away from his word my friends i think we could take from these passages of scripture that plagues are sent from god on a people because they don't listen to him they don't listen to his word they cast god away from society and very sadly in america uh this has happened especially i would say in the early 1960s uh, in 1962, there was a case that was brought before the Supreme Court, uh, Engel versus Vitale, uh, where prayer was and pub um, prayer in the Bible were excluded uh, from public uh, schools. This was brought upon by a woman by the name of Madeline Maureen Maureen, Maureen O'Hare, um, and I can remember evangelist. Billy Graham and Pastor Charles Stanley, two people who have uh, gone home to be with the Lord, but they were alive at that time, and they specifically said that the church was asleep at the wheel, and basically Christianity was silent. And as Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9 reminds us, there's nothing new under the sun. And history could often repeat itself. And I sadly believe that this is happening in America today, where much of evangelical Christianity is silent to a lot of the social ills of our society. Today, we live in a day of political correctness, um, where a lot of times we as Christians, and I, and I have to check myself out at times too, to make sure that... Um, my zeal and my faithfulness to God's word is true, that I'm not bending to the uh, pressures of society, but to be faithful to God's word. That's what we're called to be, my friends. You know, in a day that we're living in right now, where there is so much plagues affecting our society, I, earlier this week, I was cutting grass at the school where I work, and I seen these uh, lantern flies I don't know if you've seen some of these lantern flies. It was specifically sent here uh, from China, kind of like fentanyl, kind of like COVID. And real briefly, in time in the past, God has often used foreign adversaries to judge a nation. His own people, Israel, God's own chosen people, were often judged when they rebelled against God by foreign adversaries like the Babylonians, uh, the Romans. And I believe America, which was built on biblical principles by the grace of God, not a perfect nation, but by and large was built on solid biblical principles, um, has now uh, fallen away from God. Uh, I hear that like less than 1% of event, um, millennials, those my daughter's age and younger, Generation Z, uh, are have a biblical worldview of society, there is a great falling away from God. And when this happens, God will often use foreign adversaries. 
And as I was saying before, these lantern flies, what they're doing is they're killing the crops. There was a tree outside my school last month or two months ago, maybe, was alive. It's dead now. It looks like uh, winter time. No leaves. The bark of the tree is eaten up. And much is not said of these lantern flies because they can't get you physically sick, but it can destroy the plantation, the, uh, the agriculture. And you have men like Bill Gates, a multi-billionaire who is now buying up all the farmland in America with China. Uh, and again, this is not to get political, but it's just a fact. And many in America are the canary in the coal mine, so to speak. Many in America are the ostrich in the sand. Sadly, um, Saul Alinsky, Joseph Goebbels, philosophers from the 20th century, what they said is coming to fruition and truth today. Tell a lie over and over again on TV and you could brainwash low-informed, ignorant people. Tell a lie over and over again. Isn't that what the devil did since the beginning of time in Genesis 3? Deception, lies. And Adam and Eve took the bait, took the fruit, so to speak. And today, sadly, many in America are doing the same thing. My friends, we are not called to be ignorant of what's going on. We have the mind of Christ. We should know what's going on. Uh, the plagues that are being sent here in America are many. I truly believe that this is a nation under God's wrath. Many theologians I listen to feel like our country has crossed the line. We pray for revival in these days that we're living in. We should be interceding for the unsaved, the lost. Uh, we should be praying for our leaders. This is not a time to get into a panic and worry. Uh, yes, it's tempting to do that in the flesh when we see all that's going on. And I do sympathize with people that deal with anxiety or worry and fear. But we are to cast our cares on the Lord. We are to look to God in these days that are where uh, his wrath is being poured out. Again, as I quoted some of these scripture verses before, when a nation, when a people, an individual, a family, a community stops listening to God, my brothers and sisters, God has no choice but to hand them over. Read Romans chapter 1, verses 18 to 32. Verses 24, 26, and 28 all repeat the same thing. God handed them over. May God have mercy on us all and, all and us as individuals as we continue in our walk with Christ. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ who will see this devotional video today. It's a sober message, Lord, but from your word we're told. Plagues are sent, but we are healed. We are overcomers in Christ. As we read in Romans chapter 8 specifically in verses 34 to 39. In his name we pray. God bless you all.